let's do it. For this video, I'm going to piggyback a little bit off of Brad Goodman's video on using props. Brad sometimes uses a prop for a linear slide for an outside corner joint like this, and sometimes even slips a TIG finger on to make it an even smoother glide. Another common use for a prop would be for a turntable weld. And if you set it up right, you can prop both hands, the torch hand as well as your filler metal hand. And by propping and being really steady and comfortable, that's where you get those machine-like looking welds. So we're going to take a look at some plans on making your own prop. And then we're also going to take a look at one that you can buy right off the store. But either way you go, you definitely want to have one that is easily adjustable to accommodate pretty much any situation. So I'm doing this little project here, welding end caps on some tubing. I'll let you know what, the, what they're going to be uh, a little bit later on in another video. But I'm going to set the machine up for two pulses a second. In this case, I'm just propping with my torch hand. My filler rod hand is just kind of hanging out there. Wasn't ideal, but way better than not having a prop at all. But just to show why you want some versatility and adjustment on your prop, whether you make it or whether you buy it, you know, I moved the position or I flipped it up to weld this in a different position. But it just took me a few seconds to get it all set up and where I'm comfortable. And being comfortable is the name of the game. That's why you'd want to have a prop. So for a horizontal butt joint, you want to angle the tungsten kind of upwards a little bit, like this. This is from a previous video that I did on a butt joint few angles of it here. That always helps in passing x-ray and getting good shielding gas. I was lucky enough to get a pretty good arc shot here, so I'll go ahead and show that again. Tying into that very end tack. As soon as it ties in, you want to let off the pedal a little bit, and then really watch it close, and then back inward a little bit as you taper off. All right, let's get back to the positioner weld now. I set the, uh, the prop up to where I can prop both hands torch hand and filler metal hand. That's kind of what the goal is. If you're going to use a prop, you might as well get the most out of it. So I've got both hands propped here. I'm, I'm fairly comfortable. I've got the electrode pointed upwards a little bit and I'm trying to get into a rhythm. So my only excuse now is me being out of practice a little bit. But I am trying to pay attention to the three main things that make TIG welding go better. And that is a tight arc, not too much torch angle and keeping the hot tip of that filler metal shielded. Makes it a little bit easier using a large cup. I'm using a Jazzy 10 ceramic cup here. It provides a really large blanket of gas and gives you a little bit of extra leeway or fudge factor in keeping that hot tip of the rod shielded. In just a second we're going to take a look at some aluminum welds that Roy Crumrine did using the the prop that he made himself. This was from a collaboration Roy and I did a few years back. He had a whole bunch of these to do. And of course, if you got a whole bunch of round parts to do, having a positioner and a way to prop is pretty important. And since that mounting piece there is a good inch thick, Roy's giving it a, a nice quick preheat up to about 150 or 200. That always helps on aluminum jobs like this. Gets that puddle established a lot quicker, drives off moisture, you get a lot less porosity. Roy's using a number five cup here, standard collet body cup, with just a little bit of helium mixed in with the argon. And that always helps in getting that puddle established quickly too, along with the preheat. But you can see he's got both hands propped, nice and steady. This is the kind of work you dream of getting if you're starting a side hustle, starting a welding business, you know, in your garage, where the customer brings you the parts, you just fit them, tack them, and weld them together. If you're doing a side hustle, at some point in time, you're likely to get some round parts or a quantity of round parts. At least you probably hope you do. I know I did. And I bought a positioner turntable for the same reason way back in the day. My very first one was just homemade, very crude, but then pretty early on, I bought one, then I bought another. Never regretted it either. Let's, let's look now at how Roy built his. If you're into making something like this for yourself, you can use it on a turntable or you can use it on long runs, make that long horizontal glide, and it really comes in handy. 
Roy used inch and a half square tubing, eighth inch wall, milled a little flat spot where he drilled a hole there for to just weld nuts. There's not really enough material to get much threads on if you want to use a, a tap. So he just welded nuts on. Used 309 filler metal because the base plate was basically carbon steel welded to a stainless steel uh, square tubing. And 309 is, is a great rod to use for welding carbon steel to stainless steel. And you can see there, he just welded a nut where he had that little flat spot. That's his base. That's the base for the upright round stock. And the round stock is just a piece of in, inch and an eighth round tubing, inch and an eighth outside diameter. Whatever size you use, you just need to make sure that you have just a little bit of slop in it. You don't want to use something that's really, really a tight fit. Those, the bolts will, will take care of the rest. You want it kind of loose. In this case, he used inch and an eighth round tubing. Worked out really well inside of inch and a half square tubing. Now, you could use this for a lot of things, but propping on this turntable part worked really well with that. Again, the other option is just get one ready to go. This is Stronghand Tools. It's an ARW-16. It's very adjustable, really quick to set up put together, start using.